months ago. Uh, I think the one distinctive fact that you told me uh, was talk to the trees in your neighborhood. Oh, uh, yeah. And it helps both the trees and you. Uh, so let's start there. Um, what is it that you do? Um, and uh, how does that advice really help? Well, I, uh, I have been in the environment space for quite a few years now. And I literally started as just, you know, someone... I, I knew I wanted to work with nature. I just didn't know how or what. And it just so happened that I quit my job and a friend of mine took me to this urban farming space. And I just started volunteering there. So it began for me by just putting my hands in the soil and doing something. You know? It didn't start very intellectually for me. So uh, then how do you go about doing things? When, and there were times when we used to just go and volunteer and there would be nobody to you know, tell us. Uh, we had a mentor who, would, uh, who, who actually played a very big role in a lot of philosophies that I know, more than the science of what I know, uh, of nature that I know. So he would, uh, you know, do oh, I need to tell you this? Why does anybody need to tell you this? Can you not see? Can you not feel? And... From there, it actually began to uh, decoding what inherently, as a child or as a nature lover, my body knew. And I think that is where the philosophy of talking to trees uh, came for me. Ki, ha, ped bolta hai. Kaise bolta hai, wo alag hai. But there, there, it is also a body. It also has a body length. It also has a visual uh, representation. It has an auric representation. So... Initially, it was definitely not, uh, it wasn't like, you know, from day one you start to understand. But it is as simple as just sitting down. And when you sit with a friend for a tea or a coffee, and you know, you know, that person is not listening to you, uska man idhar udhar hai, uska dhyan hai, tumko pata hai. And jab dhyan rehta hai, tabhi bhi pata rehta hai. So, that is it, that tree, that friend is come for tea, and you just, that is that full attention that we give to that tree or a plant or a bird or anything that is there in front of us. So, yeah, that is what we also tell in our workshops. Most people will not understand. Most people understand philosophically, but they, they don't know what it actually means to do in person. And it is okay because it literally starts with sitting down in front of the tree and giving your full attention. It's so beautiful. Uh, many years back, I had read a book. I think it was called The Celestine Prophecy. Oh, yeah. Uh, it had something on those lines, even with human beings. Uh, while it may seem surprising, but most of us don't realize when you pay a lot of attention to what is being said, even if it doesn't agree with your point of view, which is a big deal in the world right now, everybody is just fighting about their point of view. But just sitting and listening to someone about their point of view, uh, it gives a lot of uh, encouragement to the to the speaker. And in a way, it's a very positive thing and perhaps uh, also is part of a healing process. Uh, not so much for what the speaker is saying, but the freedom that is being offered in saying that I care for what you have to say. Uh, so is that something close to what you're trying to tell us about trees as well? Yeah, that is actually very uh, true. Like, um, so I just had this experience just yesterday uh, when me and my... Um, the family I'm living with, my sister, my brother. Can you speak up a little? Yes. So we all went to the park yesterday. And mm. uh, we started talking about, you know, what I can do in my free time. And even, like, it was not what I can or cannot do in my free time. That was not the, the gist of the topic for me. Uh, because there are a lot of things, a lot of possibilities. But 
what i was struggling was am i allowed to do i have been working for such a long time that that free time to go anywhere to do anything in my head i was not sure that if i was allowed to and it wasn't about the other people uh, making me feel anything uh, you know uh, making me feel obligated or anything but when i started talking i realized that i cannot just talk about what i can do where i can go or not but that top that is a very superficial conversation but when i went to that level that i don't feel like i'm i have the courage or i'm allowed to do what i want to do that listening at that moment that i got that was that it was a complete shift you know there was a complete shift of uh, behavior body language the way i felt um opening up smiling all of that so i think even with the uh, non human creatures there is a lot of emotions they are sentient beings so just and these these things happen like sometimes you just sit uh, under a tree and and you decide you know like i want to observe this tree and i want to be here completely present some leaf will fall some flower some fruit something will fall and i feel that these are uh, this is a language this is a response so it's a dual healing the listener and the speaker they're both healing actually yeah um, personally um, uh, there are days uh, when i just wake up and uh, most days i sit to meditate most days but uh, there are some days where i feel that i need to uh, get up and go to the garden just for a walk and uh, and just be with just be it doesn't even matter that i am doing some great kind of exercise or walking at a brisk pace or any such thing in fact i do not like walking at a brisk pace even though that that is what really constitutes it constitutes exercise for me the garden is a feeling that i try and i try and soak in of sorts sometimes i even talk but uh, i haven't given attention to one particular thing but i just say thank you many times i say thank you to the grass i thank you to the insects moving around or just the general environment and i feel a connection uh, it's not necessarily a very deep connection to one particular tree or one particular flower i have uh, maybe i am too restless so i need to move or maybe that's the point but i feel generally very grateful for that environment and it reminds me of good days in my childhood when there were there was more greenery that i could go to in various ways and i found uh, a lot of connect better than human beings because human beings dependence on language is very strong and uh, now that is not the reason why i go i think i i managed to make my peace with most human beings most of the time but there is nature and there is just the sense of being that it runs through me i don't even have to do any extra thing or special thing uh, so my question to you would be is it necessary to do it in the way that you said or is there a difference between what i am saying uh, how does this work how does this environment work according to you and uh, are there any do's and don'ts obviously you don't need to cut off any flower or those things are a given but i mean in terms of reading the environment or just being how do you see this there is actually only one rule yeah please don't let your brain interrupt <laughs> don't let your brain interrupt <laughs> <laughs> i really don't think there is a uh, one way of reaching something or somebody uh, it's just like god you know there's no one way of reaching god there's no one religion to reach god so for me environment has been a god um so i think for everybody it's just that and it it happens like sometimes you sit there and your brain will take over and it will take you on a thought train and all of that will happen but also in that thought train when when you see when you are able to see your thoughts 
and this started happening for me uh, predominantly when i was spending my time in nature the ability to be able to even see my thoughts ki ha bhai tu uh, your your you know you're daydreaming or you're going on a negative trail or you're going you're you're assuming too much it's not even there so th- these things i could tell myself because there was no other noise the only noise was my own brain and as we are all humans we want to dissect everything to hai kya it's it's my thoughts are only available for me to dissect so that started happening so i think um when i say don't let your brain interrupt matlab aise nahi ki usko control karo bahut let it go because when you first start to experience solitude especially in nature your brain will throw things out in all directions yeah. so that is also a process do not let it interrupt meaning uh just don't force things ha don't force the imagination ki agar patta aise gira hai to ye aise hi kyun hai ya ye is like nature let nature reveal itself jo bhi interconnections hai there are some birds who feed only on some particular trees they will not feed on other trees ye sara jo knowledge hai let the nature reveal itself don't don't use it and try to you know forcefully connect the dots that Go, that's the human tendency. We try to put brain, put our brains too much, and then where there is not a problem, we try to fix that problem. Then that nothing is more disastrous than than that. That is again. I'm loving this conversation because so a word that comes to me is sacred. Uh, uh, there is a question running, a uh, very subtle question. are two people too many on a journey with nature who who repeat that um you use the word solitude so i am saying uh, when i was growing up my mom used to tell me a story or rather i think i read a story like that uh, two people are walking and they are quiet the entire morning and finally when they are about to leave the guy says one of the guys says what a wonderful morning this has been so next day the guy avoids him and tells somebody else this guy talks too much <laughs> and the entire hour they were quiet just that thing and sometimes i find uh, it's is far too subtle when you are in nature there are so many things happening within also uh, even when you are not using brains it is very uh, it's like a cooling balm of sorts yeah. you are you are facing the world for the rest of the time and you have to uh, you have to do what things are required what our duties are as a human being as a as a parent sister brother whatever whatever our roles in the world are but that space is so uh unbinding it doesn't care whether you are a good person or bad person or this or that it, it just is and it allows you to uh, be and soak in whatever is around you yeah. it clarifies you to you in a way you, you learn so much about yourself uh um, my question to you is are you seen as anti social because of this um i grew up as an anti social <laughs> introverted <laughs> child um i will actually say that when i started volunteering i opened up and i became partially extra i wouldn't say extroverted but i became ambivert and for me it's been like uh, i found my space i found my strength and that gave me the confidence to talk to people so there were times when we used to host uh, volunteer days we used to host a lot of volunteer days and i was surprised my parents were surprised uh because for them i was always like you know a problem child she has to be pushed out in the world otherwise she is never going to go out in the world and there they saw me inviting people into my space 
hosting them holding them having conversations with them so it was a complete change i think that is what happens over a period of time that nature teaches you that balance and if i have learned about interpersonal skills um it's predominantly in this space the minute you start to understand and value uh, codependency interdependency then all these myths that you have in your head or that people are bad people are inherently at the hell like even some like we have had experiences bad experiences with some of the volunteers uh, sometimes it's too much sometimes we would like you know within ourselves like are isko tu deal kar isko maine deal kar like mm. things would happen like that but eventually you understand and when you understand yourself better i think you are more kinder to other people so when a new person comes in and they talk too much we know that you know they have never had this space before they never had a space that could hold them with such non judgmental loving caring vibe so it's fine let this person pour out let this person talk as much as they want i do have a choice you no know, still to choose how much of it i want to listen to if i'm distracted by somebody's noise being in nature that means my brain is also my body my brain is also not entirely with the nature i don't know the word love strikes me here because it's almost like uh, everyone is uh, looking for love in various ways whatever ways they are and actually love is attention is is genuine attention and interest in another person whoever it doesn't need to have a label of abc friendship love or relatives or whatever it really doesn't matter um, so uh, i want to uh, ask you a question about when you were not this sorted uh, was there a lot of su- suffering inside when you were an introvert and not being able to were you uh, troubled by not having an expression or people not understanding you i i want to give a context because these days i talk to a lot of kids by kids i mean any anything from 17 to 30 any anything at all and they seem to talk a lot about heavy words like anxiety and stress and depression and i seem to understand uh, as a creative person i have also been very uh, solitary on my journey because even if you and i are both are creative suppose and we are working together there is still that me that i see okay who wants to explore a different kind of uh, my outlook of the world my perspective how i want to write being a writer or i want to draw and think about something so there has been this loneliness of sorts so so i do understand but it never went to a point where i see today they are they are unable to deal with it uh and we also were unable to deal with it but it wasn't it wasn't a serious subject we didn't give it labels that i have this and i have this disorder or and i find it very disturbing because i would want to know what kind of conversation can help and today for the first time it has struck me that it is maybe it is being away from nature that is giving this these kids a sense of because human beings are now all of them are competing to reach somewhere and trying to be something important and they just when we were growing up there were 10 people who were the best in the world and you were okay with that and the rest of us were all average and there was not a problem at all then uh, over a period i discovered nobody is average everybody is excellent at what they choose to do even if they may not uh, do something that agrees with my sense of achievement or perspective so as a as a achiever loosely today somebody who has gone through the dark nights and reached where you have what would you tell the priti who was um afraid who was concerned who perhaps would have belonged today what would you tell her so actually even like i grew up in the 90s so these words were 
alien to me until I was in my late twenties. Yeah. So I had no way of even understanding or knowing what is happening to me. What am I going through? True. So in that sense, I feel like um, and and it's okay. I I don't think I'll go back and I'll change that. But. this is an exercise that i've been doing i've been in therapy so this question comes around a lot in therapy so the only thing is that you can go back and tell that child is that you need to do what you want to do and have faith in yourself and things will turn out fine and it sounds very cliche but uh there is really nothing else that you can do if i had to go back and take away all the suffering then i know i would be a very different person today then i know i wouldn't be chasing things in life that i am right now so th- i don't want to go back and change anything but when you talk about the kids today i think the struggles that they have and what we had and what you had three generations apart they're very different uh now because of there is so much noise like you you just cannot shut yourself up you cannot go and go back into the cave era right these kids are so out in the open social media everything so they are going to be aware they are going to be over aware about things uh and the the danger here i feel is a lot of times you understand some you come to know about something conceptually but you have not experienced it and you start believing that you know it but you never know anything 100% unless you have experienced it so i think this these kids have a lot to digest and they are not in that capacity but at the same time uh when when you and i say that we had to achieve something uh it was very you know like i i like there was a stand there was a rank there was a standard there was an in something of that so what these kids are struggling right now is everything is done duniya mein aisa koi cheez bacha nahi hai jo surprising hai every like you know there's a five year old who is starting a company or coding something so everything is done now in this large population of creative people who are achieving constantly only achieving is not enough where is my uniqueness and we are so many that i don't know we are all unique but to find that uniqueness in so many who are um, molded in a very set pattern finding that uniqueness of myself is so difficult hazar 10000 bacche ek hi school mein ja rahe ek hi cheez seekh rahe ek hi ek hi social media they are feed that you know that brain is feeding the same thing their body is feeding the same thing their soul is feeding the same thing and their challenges the world is asking them to be unique kidhar se aayega wo so the anxiety and everything that they face is very real um but yeah, of course like, it is real i do not look down upon them in fact it is a concern because Uh, I have a teenage daughter. She is yet to grow up. That is still the next generation. She is yet to come out of school and uh, face the world at some point. Uh, in my uh, illiterate way, I have tried to be uh, very, very basic. Uh, the one brief I have given myself: the way I had my childhood, she will have the same kind of childhood, which is normal. sometimes parents get angry sometimes they are normal sometimes uh, you give them what they want sometimes you don't give them what they want uh, yeah there is a bit of difference the generational gap between me and my parents and me becoming a parent i try and uh, be a friend uh, mm-hmm. in communicating and i propose instead of impose things So I propose, okay. Look, uh, I think this is not what you should be doing. I will give you this much freedom to try this thing, these things. But you cannot be doing these things because you are still young. 
we will have to wait i'm not saying you can't ever do them because i am not going to be there forever so you will get your time when you need to do them right now i am responsible for you as a guardian so i give you this space and this is the reason why i'm not giving you this space so i respect her as an individual before i propose whatever i am proposing some days when i am frustrated and i am like a normal individual i say i am your dad and that's the end of argument <laughs> was, that's how i grew up my dad never explained to me why you just got one crack <laughs> and said this is the end of conversation how dare you ask me why am i doing this so at least that's what i am not doing but i am your dad today you are not having that conversation with me i am fed up and i don't want to explain which is something that she respects and after two hours when both of us have kind of cooled down or are not worried because other way around also happens sometimes okay. she says okay i don't want your friendship right now to hell with you. <laughs> which i am okay and i am saying yeah so both of us have this pact that after a couple of hours we will talk as if this didn't happen and if we want to talk about the event we can talk about it or else let it go if we both are sure we have a different point of view we will not talk about it Maybe some other day or we'll figure out. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes when she's in a mood and I want to tell her something. In fact, there is a good thing also. Sometimes when she is broaching a conversation, me being a conservative parent, finally I come from an old school of thought. <laughs> so I quickly blurt out all all the gyan I have. But I but 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 this is what I think. This is what I think. so that she can sit in peace and think about it theek karna hai ki nahi karna hai ye bhi hai at least maine apna gyan de diya as a parent i am out of it so my uh, question comes from there ki if there is respect uh, we also spoke about this a couple of minutes earlier when i spoke about talking to human beings with the intent to listen yeah. uh, most of the time or couple of guests have refused to come on the show uh, saying that you have to give us a list of questions i don't have a list of questions i am as much in the, if i am expecting you to come out and open yourself up on camera yes. i cannot be prepared for it myself yes. if i am not allowing you that freedom i should also not get the freedom we should just both jump into it and figure out what is that and i will also honestly tell you my experiences however uh, vulnerable i feel about them i think that much respect is required and that is all that is required um uh, you still i need that answer from you i haven't got that uh with your present experience and you being in the middle of say the generation that i'm talking about and kind of mm. us who are kind of a little older than you mm. what are your to do's to like there are people who are volunteering to come to you and they are talking a lot and you you mentioned that you have to give them space this is a, that's a beautiful thing to think karo idhar kuch bhi aa koi parent ne bole aisa karo aisa karo jo bhi karna hai dekhenge so i want to know how and what is that mind space that you give to this generation to make them feel peaceful do you do that consciously do you um I there is one thing in my consciousness every time that I don't want to judge anyone. I don't want to impose myself on anyone, and everybody is born with free will. Beyond that, sorry, uh, sorry, I can you repeat the last line? Everybody is born with free will. Born. So intentionally, I don't like. There is no preparation in my head that this is these are the do's and don'ts. Uh, but but with. i start with this intention and i see where it goes like there have been times when uh you know willing being approachable and very conscious intentional uh decision to be approachable sometimes does backfire it's not always a, a cake walk uh, there are times when volunteers will cross a line that is completely not okay either with some other volunteer or with the nature or the plant that they are working with if they are coming with a space of not knowing what their actions are and what the consequences are then you can always sit down and talk to them but when somebody is coming from an intentional harm i really don't understand what to do and at that time i do get triggered 
I do get angry and sometimes I do act out on my anger like you said some you know sometimes because you are also on your journey you're not god <laughs> so you are yeah. also human and you will react and it is just the way you think that other person uh should be held should be respected i think if you are having uncomfortable emotions that also need to be respected and allowed to be expressed um over say say rationally act out karna somewhere it it became irrationally act out karna somewhere kam hote gaya apne aap aur aise kuch soch ke plan karke nahi tha i will like to share one experience here please last Uh, two years ago when i was living in pondicherry uh, me one more friend of mine who is my who is the same age uh, she is actually my college classmate uh, we started our uh, uh, volunteering journey together so we are both in the environmental space and we were sharing the house with three other teenage boys and they were uh, they were home schooled they were quite uh, liberal in their uh, way of living and so many times i have found myself repeating my mother's sentences exactly in the same way while dealing with them <laughs> and that time it was like oh you know at that that moment i understood why my mother would say something like that or why she would get angry or behave some in a certain way and it's it's okay like we want to give the young ones their space and their freedom to find everything but even in nature if you see a parent lion monkey whatever a parent is a space holder and as a space holder uh they understand that what is well the most important is what the sanctity of that space if you are in in a house if that house has to be kept clean you and that is the way you are going to maintain the sanctity of that house then that is the top priority fir wo samne wale ko tum kaise samjhate ho wo samajhta hai ki nahi samajhta hai then use another technique use another technique and if it has to come to scolding somebody or being very assertive or sometimes even blunt and harsh then then if it is the need of that moment then it is the need of that moment of that moment and ye me ko tabhi samajh mein aaya when i was in that parental kind of a role so it's okay if the young ones don't understand at that minute yeah time uh, will catch up time will catch up i i like the fact because i i would definitely share this episode with a couple of kids that will enjoy listening to you uh, it's more contemporary a voice and uh, very sane and rational and very empathy laden it's not that you mean to give gyan to anybody per se so i like that tone of voice um uh, one question i have is about tell me about self acceptance in a in the space that you operate the work that you do because you mentioned uh, urban farming how urban space by itself is little greed oriented and uh, we are forever trying to maximize the opportunities and the money and the and the surveys and i don't know what are we trying to do with it sometimes it just uh, wears me out in so much of greed to have more 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 about everything and we can't even manage what we have to start with. right i don't even know where are we leading with this kind of attitude so uh, you've been an introvert and with all your quote and quote extrovertedness i think uh, somewhere you find you might be finding yourself out of place with uh, urban ways of dealing with things how do you accept yourself in a in an environment which does not seem conducive to growth which is slow uh, which is deliberate which needs time which needs solitude uh which cannot jump to conclusions because you need to know what you are about um how do you deal with this is there a mantra you have um i don't 
uh, and this has been the most difficult uh, aspect to deal with in my life for the past couple of years um, although i started with urban volunteering you know urban farming and everything it's been a few years now that i left the urban space and i moved to the rural space so i keep which is why we couldn't even get on call for such a long time i keep going out so within a month it's probably five days or one week that i'm in the city rest of the weeks i'm at some site or the other i don't know if this is the right way of dealing right now the way i am dealing it with it is escapism i i am escaping the urban spaces uh which is also why i suddenly felt very like not grounded when i came to us because i'm right in the middle of a city where the only natural spaces are parks and parks are also like volleyball court basketball court like you can see the grass is also fake grass <laughs> there's some oh. pockets here where there'll be green grass or trees there are enough trees but it's it's still a city and it it is making me very irritable so i am not at present dealing with that issue in my life um and i don't know i've been asking myself this question for a very long time because it's been my dream to just have a land go back to the land build my own farm house and live there and shut out the whole world and then there is this another space where like i recently conducted a workshop for uh, rotary club in thane and it was about urban kitchen gardening and the kind of questions these people asked and after the workshop the way they they were all approaching and they were all also curious about how they can do something so i am like split in these two things that there is a need and uh, you know if i can stay here and make the people and environment better of an urban space then should i do this or should i be selfish and just leave everything and you know go where it's so it's all easy basically not in, it has its own struggles but it is it is still very easy so i don't know i'm i'm still like confused mm, one of the questions that is coming to me this series is called the other side of now since you throw away the urban farmer label that was running in my head rural farmer you are not the typical rural farmer that you should look at um a title that came to my head now when you said that you are trying to um, mix your own vulnerability with trying to serve the world that you love so much obviously is the other side of a of an eco friend Yeah. maybe that's what you are uh, a friend of ecology environment i don't know what are the differences technically between all of these but more that you are a friend to the earth or a, um, yeah i i actually uh, read a lot of earlier also i have read a lot about the uh, uh, earlier american settlements uh, which were the locals mm-hmm. red indian and stuff like that and their point of view fulfilled a lot of space in my heart uh, when you know when one is growing up you're struggling with the world as it is coming up as of right now mm-hmm. and uh, the urban spaces the uh, having just the inhum- humanness of it all mm-hmm. by human i mean we are just part of nature and Uh, just letting go and just being for a while without being so busy and adamant and arrogant and proud of achievements of certain kinds um, in my life i'm dealing with artificial intelligence right now i don't even know what kind of beast that is uh, the lucky part i had is that no worry uh, uh the lucky part is that uh, the couple of times when i was forced to use it my clean clients came back I try and work with agencies, so I don't have to work with direct clients most time. Sometimes I do. So the clients came back to the agency, find a new writer. <laughs> I said, "Good," because I, for my life, don't understand this. It's like perfect grammar. Everything is given to you. There is nothing to. Yeah. But there is no. I don't know. There is no mistake. There is nothing dark about it, or there is nothing wrong with it. 
and i don't know what to feel about it i have no feelings mm-hmm. so yeah it is quite strange so is that all right with you if i call you an eco friend on the podcast Or- i would actually love that because this was something that uh, came up a few years ago um there was this one volunteer who said that you know we we should we are doing this to save the planet save this save that and i'm like who are we to save anything <laughs> exactly so i'm i'm not an, an eco warrior or an environmentalist or anything then farming happened like on in rural sectors farming happened and i'm like i don't i don't think i'm a farmer look at that was like he's been farming since he was probably 4 years old i don't i i cannot compete with that person uh secondly farming was never my interest like i was not i never thought that i'll be a big farmer and i'll have so much of produce and i'll sell and this and that i got into it because i used to like exploring nature so i did come to a point last year where i was like who am i i even in this space i was like who am i i'm again in a in a place of confusion um few months back uh some clarity came to me when i was traveling back from odessa it was one break that i took for myself and i felt like i need to start something where environment and spirituality for the lack of words but you know just um, it it environment cannot be approached from merely a scientific approach it has to be a human approach it has to be an emotional approach and this is where i felt like i had something to offer because as a child wherever whenever i was suffering i was always in the garden so that that's been a healing as nature has been more of a healer for me so i wanted to kind of those two things together and start something so i started something called as purnamidam eco consciousness development organization Uh, it's still in the making i've i'm not yet openly shared to uh, share to uh, about this to many people only my friends know and in this space i want to invite people to explore nature and find whatever their learning is mm. is there any place where you feel concerned about livelihood and material things is that a concern at all or are you so rich that you don't have to bother no that that's a big concern uh if i don't have to do anything for the rest of my life uh i know i can live a a very you know out in the forest ke forest mein kidhar to ek jhopri bana ke rehna but that kind of life i can definitely do comfortably uh but no and I'm, i'm not that rich to live this life and not work uh, how so do that, you manage this so right now uh i've been working with a lot of uh, ngos on projects uh doing plantations designing land designing uh, reforestation farms etc training farmers and everything my dream would be some day to have my own forest land and teach not teach but like i said hold that space and there are some modules which create that space games uh, trails activities meditation they are merely like triggers wo bas chabi hona honi chahiye but that person should predominantly explore their own learnings in that space so i have been doing trial and errors of small workshops when i was in mumbai now i'm here i don't know what to do um I have run out of questions, but I have a wish for you. May these couple of months that you have uh, to do some soul searching in a space that doesn't appeal to you too much because of fake grass. I agree with you on the fake grass bit fully. Uh, one of my childhood memories is running through grass and 
feeling those insects biting you and uh, even yeah. grass actually hurts yeah. you if people yeah. i don't know if kids today know that it, it is not you. easy <laughs> it is not you easy can't to <laughs> it actually hurts you quite uh, severely if you are not careful yeah um but uh, may this space where the universe has put you for a reason i'm sure uh, open up even more avenues of thought uh, which help you give back to the world and live a fulfilling life for yourself i am so glad i am so glad that we had this conversation this is i'm i'm actually very happy i was actually thinking what will i say because i've been going through some emotional fluctuations but yeah i was like whatever happens yeah um, i am and i'm very glad yeah this has been a wonderful wonderful conversation thank you so much thank I you i shall see you soon bye take care bye, bye.